evening, everybody. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Ewan McLeod. I'm Director of Strategy and Policy at the Bar Standards Board. Um, I want to thank you all for coming and joining us this evening. Um, we're here to talk about the BSB's new pilot with digital comparison tools, which is a really exciting new project for us. Um, we've got some great speakers who I'll, I'll introduce in a moment. They'll give us an overview of why this is important from a consumer and regulatory perspective. And we'll have a couple of the DCT participants to tell us about their involvement. Um, a quick housekeeping matter before we get into it. Um, we are recording this and we're planning to put the presentations on our website after the event. Um, it's possible that some people might be identified as an attendee um, if their names appear on the screen, but it will be just names, no uh, faces. Um, if anyone objects to that, then please let us know and we can uh, take appropriate action. Um, then after the presentations, we'll have a question and answer session. So if you have any questions at any point, please pop them in the chat and we'll try our best to get to all of them. Um, so without further ado, I will turn to our first speaker. Um, our first speaker is Rupika Madura, who's the head of policy and research at the Bar Standards Board. Um, she joined the BSB in February 2020. Uh, prior to that, she worked in rail, water and energy regulation for over 15 years. And she also sits on Southeast Water's Customer Challenge Group as an independent policy expert. So mm -hmm. I think uh, if I just stop spotlighting myself and uh, Richard, if you're able to share Rupika's slides. Brilliant. Um, I think that's. Uh, we can see both the current slide and the next one. Are you able to adjust it so there's only one? Yeah. Yeah, that should be all right. Is that is that better? Perfect. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so Rupika, mm -hmm. over you, over to you. Thank you, and um, good evening, everyone. I will start by explaining what we mean by digital comparison tools or DCTs for short, as we call them, and I will refer to them as DCTs throughout my presentation. DCTs allow consumers to locate and select legal service providers using a range of criteria, such as practice information, barrister profiles, location, price, ratings and reviews. And at the same time, they also allow barristers to market their business and collect useful feedback from the clients to improve their services which they are providing to the clients. Currently, if we look at the bar, we have some established law focused sites such as the direct access portal, which is run by the bar council and there is Clark's room direct. We have some general sites where um, these sites host. Client reviews and these are, for example, the Google review and Trustpilot. We've also got some new market entrants who are participating in this pilot with us, Legal Utopia, Review Barristers and Lawyer 365. Next slide, please, Richard. Thank you. I'm going to take you through the purpose of this pilot from BSB's point of view now. There has been an increase in the use of digital tools by consumers to seek services. Comparison tools can help to facilitate access to justice by improving transparency for consumers. So use of technology and innovation in this space has a potential for bringing positive benefits for consumers and barristers, which as a regulator, we're keen to explore and support. And this pilot is providing us with this great opportunity to do so. The pilot was launched by us last month and will run for 12 months until September 2023. Through this pilot, what we're seeking to understand is how the DCT market works for barristers and consumers, and the challenges and opportunities that exist for barristers, DCTs and consumers. A similar pilot was uh, run by Solicitors Regulation Authority with Council for Licensed Conveyances and Silex, and we're building on that particular pilot. That pilot is at the evaluation stage and the outcome of that should be made available soon by those regulators. Next slide, please, Richard. In terms of participants in this particular pilot, we have four DCTs who are currently taking part in this pilot with different business models. It's important to emphasize not all DCTs are about reviews and ratings. DCTs have signed up to a voluntary code of conduct which we've designed, and these, this code of conduct covers issues such as complaints policies to tackle fake reviews. 
We welcome more DCTs to come forward and join this pilot over the course of the next 12 months. Next slide, please, Richard. Um, we welcome both direct access and referred barristers to come forward and join the pilot. And in order to do so, they can register their interest at the email address, which is now being displayed on the screen. Um, what would be expected of you would be to sign up with one or more of the DCT participants in the pilot. We would also encourage you to leave reviews through your clients on the service you've provided to them and engage with those reviews which the clients have left on your service. For the purposes of evaluation study, we will also ask you some questions throughout the pilot at regular intervals to collect data. Finally, we will be sharing the results of the evaluation of this pilot once complete, and I'm excited to see what will be revealed about this market in due course. Thank you very much, Ewan. Back to you. That's great. Thanks very much. So I'll move on now to our next speaker, who is uh, Robin Geddes, who's a regulatory policy manager at the Legal Services Board. Um, Robin is the LSB's policy lead for market transparency and consumer engagement and is undertaking policy development work into signals of quality for consumers. He's also engaged in research into consumer perceptions of how lawyers' competence is assessed. So, Robin, over to you. Thanks, you, and, and thanks to um, the BSB for inviting me to join this panel. Um, so, for those of you who don't know, the Legal Services Board is the oversight regulator in legal services. So, we oversee the work of the BSB and the other frontline regulators, the Solicitors Regulation Authority, and so on, um, to ensure they uphold the regulatory objectives, but and one of those is to act in the consumer interest. So I will give a bit of background as to um, as to this work and explain what's going on elsewhere in the sector. So we at the LSB and the regulators have found, you know, long-standing issues in legal services that it's very difficult for consumers, prospective clients to identify the right um, legal services provider to suit their legal needs when they have an issue that needs to be resolved. Um, and there's obviously a variety of reasons why that's the case. You know, legal services are complex. They're not kind of regular purchases for most consumers. Um, they're often sought at a time of difficulty or distress. And I understand this pilot focuses on employment law. Um, so that's a good example. Um, but it's also due to a lack of information, you know, being available to help inform consumers when they are looking for that provider at the point of need. So the Competition and Markets Authority conducted a study uh, of the legal services market in 2016 and a follow up review in 2020. And in both cases found that the market isn't working well for consumers um, and made various recommendations and said that um, consumers need better information about price, service, quality of legal services providers to help inform their choice and enable them to um, shop around and choose and choose the right provider for them. So, as I say, the CMA made recommendations to the regulators, including the BSB, on how to improve things for consumers. Um, and since 2020, the Legal Services Board has been responsible for kind of monitoring progress on these issues. Um, we published a statement of policy earlier this year, which sort of sets expectations uh, of the BSB and the other regulators as to what they should be doing uh, to what we're calling empowering consumers to make the right choice. And I think we are seeing positive signs. Um, we've seen the BSB's latest transparency findings published in July, uh, which show, you know, increases in compliance with transparency rules, but also more clients are getting that information they need on service and price, um, which should be resulting in, you know, better informed prospective clients, um, which we think are, you know, good outcomes. Uh, and this is something that's happening across the sector. You'll hear from the Legal Services Consumer Panel shortly, but the data from their latest tracker survey earlier this year shows, you know, increased levels of shopping around um, and consumers having information about providers uh, across the legal services sector. So focusing on the DCT pilot specifically, one of the things that we at the LSB have said is we want to see consumers not just getting that information, but being able to more easily compare providers. And at the moment we see digital comparison tools and review sites as one of the main tools for allowing those comparisons. We've you know, been monitoring the DCT market for the last couple of years uh, closely, and we've worked with Legal Utopia and Trust Pilots uh, in recent times and have seen growth among use of legal, uh, sorry, have seen growth uh, in DCT usage for legal services specifically uh, in those last couple of years. 
Um, and so we're pleased to see the BSB launching this pilot. We think this is a good opportunity to um, explore whether DCTs are suitable um, among the barrister community and for users of barrister services. Uh, as Rupika mentioned, there was a similar initiative led by some of the other regulators looking into DCTs. They'll be publishing their um, their pilot findings soon. Um, the early signs are again positive. Um, you know, uh, consumers and DCTs alike finding benefits in increased use in legal services. Um, and pleased to hear that BSB will be building on that work. Um, so that's the wider context. We think it's a good initiative and hopefully one that the regulated community embraces. Uh, for those of you interested in the Legal Services Board's work, uh, would encourage you to go to the LSB website after this where you can see our policy statement and find out more about our wider work on uh, transparency and uh, empowering consumers. Thanks. Uh, that's great, Robin. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to hand over to Paul Crook now, who's a panel member of the Legal Services Consumer Panel. Um, Paul has a background in business and digital transformation and strategy consulting, and he's worked for the likes of Amazon Web Services, IBM and Accenture. Um, he's also worked with consumer panels at the Consumers Association and has extensive professional experience advising on customer services. So I'll just spotlight you, Paul, and hand over to you. Thank you very much, Ewan, and um, thank you to Robin for uh, that uh, excellent introduction of what uh, the Legal Services Consumer Panel does. Um, we are very closely aligned to uh, what LSB are trying to do in terms of um, driving um, the consumer's interest in the provision of legal services and representing them. So we do sit independent of the LSB, although we work closely with them, but also closely with the regulators themselves particularly bringing our own expertise and our focus, including our research, um, that aims to represent consumer interests now and looking forward. Um, as, as, as Robin said, we have seen progress um, from a consumer's perspective, and I would um, encourage people to look at our tracker survey, which has been running for uh, over a decade now and gives us consistent information on consumers' perception of legal services, um, which obviously includes services provided by all legal services providers, that includes barristers. Um, and interestingly, in the last two years, we've seen a significant increase in the use of the digital world. So the use of technology for consumers seeking to choose and then use um, legal services. And our research focuses on primarily on those two things as they affect this um, pilot. Um, we too have, you know, welcomed this pilot and think the timing is, is very good indeed. Given we've seen an uptick in the use of um, you know, digital based services, use of technology, um, we've also seen a significant increase in the correlation between how much consumers feel they've been able to choose, you know, that they've been able to make a choice, um, so have had enough information to shop around, and their ultimate satisfaction with that services provider. Um, so that tells us that if you enable consumers to choose, you encourage a more positive collaboration with your customer. Um, so it is a good thing. The other interesting thing is our tracker survey has shown a significant increase in the use of um, consumers finding service providers. So an increase from running roughly at about 5% um, up to 8% overall in just the last year. That's a significant uptick. And um, looking at the information that is most often obtainable through digital channels, that is price information, we've seen a significant increase from a fairly consistent 2% up to 5%. Now, these are small percentages um, when you look at the overall volume of transactions, but the change is significant. <clears throat> and particularly looking at the last two years, it looks as though consumers are now 
not you know expecting to see the sort of information they seek available on digital comparison um, websites of the, of the type being tested in the pilot. Another thing that our expertise tells us about is that when consumers um, research and choose and use, um, they're quite likely to do that even where they are not directly involved in the choice of barrister. So um, quite a common phenomenon that um, I know from my deep experience of working in you know, customer relationship management is that people will often check out the barrister that their solicitor has chosen for them. So the ability to gather information on uh, barristers using digital tools, I think, is very much sought after. The other a phenomenon that we think is very important in this is the availability of information and the use of DTCs encourages that. It encourages consistency in format because sites that allow you to compare easily help to drive that standardization, which makes it easier for consumers to choose. There has been some progress in price transparency. It has been very slow compared to the ambition set out by the, you know, by the CMA, um, but it is increasing and improving. And I mentioned earlier the, the increase in, in people finding for the first time uh, the price of the services they're, they're seeking um, on um, digital channels. The area that is still very weak, and uh, this is a key focus area for the LSB, and we're very um, happy to see that. Plus, we know that um, both the SRA and BSB are interested in this, is quality comparison. This is an area that is still significantly underdeveloped when compared to other types of services, and particularly other services that are complex, such as legal services. So I think there's a lot of work to be done there, but we do believe that the use of DCTs could encourage that work to accelerate, uh, and we would certainly welcome that. So the pilot will bring a number of significant advantages. And probably just one comment. Um, one of the things that we know from looking at customer feedback is that it can be a very, very valuable tool because another aspect that we look at is the professionalism of legal services providers in the context of consumer need. And gathering feedback is a hugely valuable source of information on how well you are actually perceived when you're delivering your service that allows you to win more business. So this pilot not just promises something very valuable to consumers, but also I believe very valuable to the profession and to the um, BSB as a whole. Hope that helps you. That's great, thanks a lot, Paul. Um, so I'm going to turn now to one of our um, DCT participants in the pilot. So our next speaker is Neil Baton, who's the head of partnerships for the UK at Trustpilot. Neil's the key point of contact at Trustpilot for any barristers who want to learn more about Trustpilot services. Um, in recent years, he's taken an increasing interest in the legal services market, assisting both the legal services consumer panel and the LSB with their research into the legal sector. So I uh, bear with me, Neil, as I spotlight you. And uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ewan. I'm just going to share my screen. Um, good evening, everyone. Uh, let's see if I can do this without a hitch. Probably not. Um, you can probably now see all my emails. One second. Yes. Yeah. There we go. So Trustpilot. Um, I guess you've probably all seen Trustpilot, the star and uh, and what have you, but some people might not know exactly what Trustpilot does. So I'm just going to go through a little bit more. Very high level. Um, so Trustpilot, we are a consumer review platform. We are um, we have many offices around the world, uh, so we're probably the largest um, uh, customer review platform in the world. And uh, we help um, consumers make decisions about services that they're going to potentially purchase. And we do that by allowing businesses to collect reviews from their customers uh, very easily. So we do that 
by a multitude of different ways. It could be clicking on a link. It could be an embedded review form in your website or more often or not, it's going to be an invite or an, an email. Um, we're very pleased to be part of the BSB pilot and we have, uh, as Ewan said, we've we've uh, increased our sort of uh, visibility in the legal sectors market in the last couple of years based upon the CMA report and the LSB findings and what have you. And we're seeing that there's a there's a change in the behaviour of, of consumers when looking to, to make a decision on um, legal services. And there's a huge trust gap and uh, we're hoping to fill that trust gap. So we're slightly different. Uh, we're, we're not necessarily, we don't see ourselves as a, a digital comparison tool. Well, we are a digital comparison, but definitely not a digital comparison site. We are a reviews platform. We're a destination site for consumers. And why is that important for legal services? It's important because we know that consumers say they take a lot of um, influence from reviews from a third party independent platform such as Trustpilot. So 90% of consumers say that buying decisions are influenced by online reviews. 72% uh, of consumers will take action after reading a positive review. And the good one for uh, barristers that have a, a good high level of service is people will pay more. So it's not one of those, you know, in certain sectors, you have that race to the bottom when, when it comes to price. Actually, it's not just about price, it's about the service you offer. And we know that, that lots of consumers will pay for that additional um, services. So the reason that Trustpilot is important for legal services is because it's important for consumers. And as I said, we're a destination site. So we have uh, around 12 million unique visitors to our website every single month, and they're coming to our platform not to purchase Trustpilot, but they're coming to Trust Trustpilot to look for great businesses to work with. Um, reviews have lots of different uh, aspects of it so we have a, an agreement with google where we feed in reviews into google that can be on organic listings but it can also be on the paid listings as well so you've often probably see the adverts that come up at the top of uh, organic listing google pages trustpilot feeds your reviews into those um adverts if you if you use them we also feed into social media um advertisements so like I said at the top of the uh, the presentation, you've probably seen the Trustpilot um, logo on a number of different adverts, whether that's a tube or train or on TV. Uh, and that's because people want to leverage the fact that they're on Trustpilot and to offer that credibility onto their, the, the services. And, and, and that has an impact on people picking up the phone, uh, walking into their dealership, if it's a car dealership, or uh, clicking on that ad. Where we also feel that we're going to benefit, and, uh, and, and Paul um, mentioned it a little bit earlier, is uh, recommendations and um, additional work from, from solicitors. So we understand that, that it's not necessarily always the consumer that might pick a barrister, it might be from a solicitor. And I, I feel that they've got a duty of care to the, to the end customer to be choosing a barrister based upon um, not just the legal outcome, it's actually about the, the customer service they offer as well. And I think that that might have been not lost necessarily by barristers in the past, that it's actually not just about the outcome. It's also about the um, uh, the communication, empathy, eth ethics. These are all the things that we know through, you know, um, market research that consumers are looking for when they're deciding to choose on a, um, a legal service or a barrister. Okay. Just want to talk about a little bit the, the nuts and bolts of Trustpilot, like I say, we are a destination site. On the left-hand side, you'll see our um, our categories page. So this is where consumers can come uh, to Trustpilot to decide on a barrister, and you might want to decide on how many reviews they've got or actually their score. And and this is the comparison part, and uh, we talked about it before, where actually, you know, in, in the past, there's not really been a, a hell of a lot of um, platforms out there to allow consumers to make an informed decision. And it's always, typically a, a very emotional time for consumers. So they, they really do need this information at hand for them to make a, an informed decision. At the, at the moment, <coughs> excuse me, we've only got 15 barristers on the Trustpilot platform. However, we're getting 4,000 uh, views every single day. So those 15 barristers are, are collecting a lot of reviews um, per day from consumers looking for barristers. On the right-hand side, you'll see a profile page and this is where um, barristers and solicitors and legal firms can put a little bit of information about wh where they can find them, 
um, opening times, um, locations, whatever it might be. But then this profile page has all of their reviews, and this is the good, the bad, and the indifferent. And this is this is where consumers can make a decision based upon their their um, their customer service. I mentioned a little bit earlier about how many visitors we get. So we're about the 25th most visited website in the UK. And the reason that's important is because that Google then gives us lots of um, Google juice. I don't know if that's the right word. I've used it many, many times. But 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 what that means is every single profile page on Trustpilot is very well ranked for certain um, search terms. So it could be, you know, King & Co um, reviews or Can I Trust? Erwin Mitchell or whatever it might be and that has a significant impact on your reputation being found on Google and we know that that customer journey is changing um, uh, quickly and that's it I thought I'd another slide but obviously not but um, you can come to Trustpilot to find out more information and obviously you can be contacted through um, the BSB pilot as well that's great, that's great. thanks a lot Neil um, and I'm getting a bit of feedback at the moment. I hope everyone else isn't hearing that as well. But um, our next speaker is um, Paresh Kathrani, who's the Chief Executive Officer of Legal Utopia. Um, Paresh joined the Legal Utopia in October 2021, initially as Interim Chief Data Officer and latterly as the company's CEO. He formerly worked as a senior lecturer in law at the University of Westminster, where he specialised in legal tech research. Paresh is also a strategic advisor on legal tech to the Legal Technology and Innovation Institute in London and the Nicholas Romeris University in Lithuania. So over to you, Paresh. Thank you very much, Ewan. I'll just share some slides. OK. Right, I don't think I can share my slides. OK. Can you see my screen? Yes. Brilliant stuff. OK, excellent. OK, I think you can see my slides. Uh, we can see the slides. It's not started as a slideshow yet. There it is. We've got it now. Brilliant stuff. Well, thank you very much, Ewan, for that very kind introduction. And thank you very much to the BSB um, for the opportunity to participate in this much needed um, pilot on DCTs. Uh, my name is Dr. Paresh Kafrani, and I'm CEO at Legal Utopia. Um, pleasure to be presenting to you today. I'll begin by saying a few words about who we are. So Legal Utopia, a company was founded back in 2017 to reconceptualize the provision and access of law and legal services for new technologies. Uh, uh, one project that we worked on back in 2017, which I'll expand upon in this presentation, was the development of an algorithm, um, a natural language processing um, engine, by which people can type in their, their legal problems into our engine and the, the machine is intelligent enough to triage what their problem is and help them understand what their problem is. And that the algorithm is programmed to uh, be able to answer up to 400,000 uh, problems that people may, may encounter. Um, so we've been in the innovations in the law tech space since 2017, um, innovating and developing technology. And this informs our vision, which is a world where people everywhere feel empowered by technology to access law and lawyers. I'd like to expand a bit, a bit more on what we mean by empowered there because it's relevant to, to my presentation today and to the pilot as well. So we, we have a, a, very, um, a very specific definition of, of empowered within our vision, which rests upon public legal education. We believe that now, given the way in which people are find, accessing information, making informed choices, how habits are changing, that this can also apply to the law and that people are now accessing uh, legal information online, of course, and it's therefore important to provide them with that information to enable them to make informed choices. And that uh, is, of course, a very is a key pillar of public legal education. So what we mean by empowered is the provision of information to the public to enable them to make choices. And the way in which we do that is through our technology stack. And there I put an image of our technology stack, which um, essentially is um, our mobile application, which can be downloaded from the App Store, and also our web browser as well, our web browser, which I'll go through in a few moments. What that provides is an infosphere to the public. Um, for example, our mobile app uh, is free of charge. It provides an infosphere to the public to enable them to make choices about what lawyers 
uh, they should go to in order to um, access legal services. So that's a, an image of our ecosystem. Um, empowered means PLE, public legal education, delivered through our technology and information therein to enable people to make choices and, and that cycle goes around as they feel more empowered. We've heard it mentioned today that um, the uh, Legal Services Consumer Panel did a uh, release this tracker back in um, July 2022. 20, uh, and uh, a quote in there is that more consumers are shopping around this year, 43% compared to 30% in 2021, with legal service providers providing more information online to make this easier. So uh, there is evidence to, to, to of course show that people are now doing more online shopping and that ties into our, our model, which is to provide them with more information. So how do we do this? I'll, I'll mention this in a, in a few words. So um, our platform is uh, essentially a multi-sided platform. On the one side, we have an artificial intelligence engine, which you would have heard me mention before, called Legal Checker AI, available on the uh, via mobile app on the App Store. And in, in, in developing that AI, we analyze more than 100,000 cases to look at the way in which people articulate their legal problems. So for example, one person might say that my neighbor's playing loud music. One person might say that my neighbor's keeping me awake. Another person might say that my neighbor's causing a racket, for example. But the ultimate end point would be a, 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 maybe a tort case in, in, in nuisance. So we looked at more than 100,000 cases to examine the way in which people articulate their problems and build legal checker AI, which uses natural language processing to help them with their legal problems. Uses machine learning technology to classify descriptions of, a, of legal problems. It's a 24-7 uh, service. And it incorporates a civil legal aid checker to enable them to see whether their, 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 their issue is um, eligible potentially for legal aid. So on the one side of our platform, we are multi, being multi-sided, we have the AI, which um, helps consumers understand what their legal problems are. Once that information has been provided to them, then on the other side of the platform, we have find a, law, or find a lawyer and book a lawyer services, which then gives them the option based upon their problem to uh, find and access lawyers. So we have a geo map, which um, enables them to uh, pinpoint or find a local uh, solicitors and barristers. And that's available on our mobile app and web service. So they can access lawyers profiles with enhanced um, British information. Um, if lawyers choose to do so, they can um, synchronize their calendars to our, our website so that um, clients can book appointments and they can also synchronize their, their Zoom, um, Zoom links as well, uh, Zoom platforms as well so they can hold uh, video calls via security via our platform. So that's the multi sided platform, and we're also exploring other services to co uh, complement that, such as marketing support, um, fin litigation finance, and providing space as well. So that's a couple of images of our technology. On the, on the left-hand side, you have our legal checker AI available on a mobile app. And on the, on the right-hand side, you have our, um, our comparison site, which is available via our website so people can book appointments with, find and book appointments with lawyers. The last couple of slides, I'll just talk you through our tech stack, our tech ecosystem. So uh, we have a mobile app, as I mentioned before, available on the App Store, where if lawyers have synchronized their calendars, then clients can book um, an appointment directly into their calendar and that goes through to the lawyer, um, they're notified, um, etc. Also, our mobile app also has legal checker AI. Um, and also, we provide information on our web browser. So there you'll see, for example, um, uh, a geo map on the, on the right-hand side and uh, lawyer profiles on the, on the um, left-hand side. And the key thing about those loyal profiles is that, that they, are, uh, they enable that comparison to be made. So on there, you have information such as um, the lawyer's name, contact details, but also uh, practice areas. We're also looking at regional price variations. We're looking at uh, reviews and scoring to enable people to make an informed choice as to um, where they should go uh, for their particular legal problem, having triaged it through our AI. So we are seeking to introduce more uh, quality indicators there um, to enable people um, to make that informed decision within our infosphere. Uh, we're very keen to, uh, we're very happy and very keen to uh, participate in this pilot because we'd like to understand what it is that, that barristers want, how they perceive comparison websites, um, what issues they have, um, how they might look at it favourably or not so favourably. So having that dialogue and that conversation with barristers so we can understand their needs and wants and of course understand consumers' needs and wants and marry that all up within our ecosystem is very important to us and that's why we're, we're very grateful for the opportunity to participate in this pilot.
Uh, but ultimately, our, our, as I mentioned, our, our ecosystem is about choices and, and providing the tech stack to empower people because public legal education is an ethos and value of, uh, of ours. And so I'm very happy to be uh, developing technology that can help the public make choices. And we look forward to continuing to build technology that does so. Thank you very much. That's great. Thanks a lot. Um, and thanks to all of our speakers. Um, we had some really interesting presentations there. I think it's clear that the digital landscape and clients' expectations are changing, and it's really good to see some of the innovations in the sector.